All right, next up on the show, we're going to talk about a pharmaceutical company that has been able to wiggle its way out of 38,000 lawsuits. Any guesses what this pharmaceutical company might be? Uh, here's a hint. They have a COVID vaccine. Interesting. Johnson & Johnson is using a loophole in Texas that allows it to spin off a part of its company. And interestingly enough, it spun off a part of the company that is being sued. It is currently being sued on accusations that it had a talc in baby powder that had asbestos. Now this caused over 38,000 lawsuits and Johnson & Johnson put all of the assets that are responsible for these decisions into one LLC and, or I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know for sure if it's an LLC, but it's a different entity. And that entity, surprise, is filing for bankruptcy. What happens when they file for bankruptcy is that anyone who is trying to sue them can get way the heck in the back of the line and will never, in fact, get paid out. Uh, this is concerning because Johnson & Johnson, some internal memos had shown that there were people within the company who knew this and expressed concern on the lasting effect of, say, arsenic on babies' reproductive parts and uh, did nothing about it and I don't know, now we have a generation of people with the highest percentage of infertility. Could these kind of decisions possibly be related? Who knows, right? Uh, but the thing is now, these people will not be able to be made right by suing Johnson & Johnson. And why does that matter? Well, because litigation can be obviously a stain on the, uh, you know our judicial system, but it also is how we enforce our values. And with groups of people come up and say, I sue you, I don't stand for this, and I want there to be a precedent so that other companies cannot do this to people. And that now the precedent is, well, I spin this off into a place you can't get to this money. Now, Johnson & Johnson is making profit hand over foot, largely due to the COVID vaccine. Uh, but I think it's worth all of us knowing that these are the kind of things that this company is doing while it's off saving the world from COVID. Well, I'm just curious, like how in the world can they do this? Like, how can they just like there's been a lawsuit, there's been a, a set of lawsuits yes. against 38,000 of them against the company. And then they just break switch, off that piece of break the company. off that piece of the company, like an arm, like a Lego piece. And then they form a new company. And then in that new company, they just declare bankruptcy. Like, right. How is that possible? And aren't you then the plaintiff saying, I'm not suing new company. I'm suing old the old company. company. And so how is that possible? It's like like putting your doppelganger up and being like, no, you're mad at fake Natalie. Here you go, right? right? It, how does that work? Um, apparently there's a loophole in Texas law that allows you to do that. And you know, now the bankrupts, I mean, there is, so there is a, a chance that the bankruptcy court does not does not go for it, right? You, you can't just file a bankruptcy by clapping your hands. You have to go in front of a bankruptcy judge and the judge could say, no, I see through this. You are in fact going to pay these lawsuits. Um, it's not very likely because of the way bankruptcy works. And so it's very sad that either parents that used this on their babies or people who had it used on them when they were babies now have these lasting effects of arsenic. Yeah, I mean, it's astonishing in how you can take a, you can just decide to break off a piece of a company and then have, uh, you know, some state say, yeah, that's okay. And again, I come back to the court. We've talked about this on the show over the past year, the Supreme Court, these high courts, you know, very often when you're running for, when you're running for office or, or during election season, a lot of these politicians will run on cultural issues, right? Yeah. They'll run on, talk about abortion or guns or whatever, but then like no politician is getting rid of guns. They're just, it's not, you know, that's, that's just something cultural they talk about. Mm -hmm. But really what happens behind the scenes is at these court levels, it all ends up becoming business litigation. Yes. Almost none of these issues ever make it to these big courts. And it ends up being businesses versus people. Those are the, I think it's 85% of all cases that come before state Supreme yeah. Courts and the Supreme Court are exactly like this. Yes. It's a big business that's screwed over the little guy and they get off. This is why judges 
judges. I mean, this is why this is such an important thing when we talk about judges and why Mitch McConnell was right. fighting to make sure that these conservative judges get on the bench because of this. It's not about necessarily abortion, although that's a piece of it. It's about this. It's about big businesses making sure that they can take, they, they can keep their profits and walk all over the little guy. Yes. And this yeah. is a perfect example. Um, so sure. in Texas, and they then, can then, do this? Right. Go ahead, David. Uh, sorry, I was going to say, and then people wonder why people are, are skeptical about the V. Yeah. Right. Uh, Cher Marie in the chat points out that I, I may have said arsenic. I meant uh, asbestos. Asbestos. A, okay. a different A, bad chemical <laughs> that starts with an A. Yeah, I mean, here's the uh, I wouldn't want either of them in my baby products. And I will say that baby powder is something that solves, right, the solution to disposable diapers, which in and of themselves have a lot of chemicals. It's like this sort of self, it, it's a... It, it's a virtual circle, right, of products that have chemicals on them that you need them because you're using the first toxic thing, right? So explain this, so okay. Okay, so disposable diapers, which we called in our house sposies, that's what the cloth diapering community calls them, sposies. And they're awful because they're filled with toxins. Are t filled with toxins. In fact, the chemical that is no longer allowed in tampons that causes toxic shock syndrome is still actively in use in baby diapers. Um, so we decided when our son was three months old, never to use disposables and we used cloth diapers. And so because we used cloth diapers, we did not need baby powder. Baby powder is necessary if you're using disposable diapers, which also Johnson & Johnson makes, right? So they make the diaper and because sposies cause diaper rash, they also make the powder, which helped to mitigate that a little bit. So wait a minute, they're, they're creating the problem. And then fixing the, the problem. And they're fixing the problem with another chemical like you have to buy. Like, yeah, it, it solves the problem. Right, so shampoo. I'm creating a toxic problem with these disposable diapers. Right. And then I'm going to sell you the product that will then uh, try to fix the, fix the problem. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. So I'm not saying this to say that everyone should cloth diaper. I think they should. Um, I'm saying this because anytime you wean yourself off of a mass produced product that is personal care, you are probably doing yourself a favor, right? Um, I feel the exact same way about deodorant. I feel the same way about conditioner. Conditioner solves the problem that shampoo creates, right? <laughs> Um, baby powder solves the problem that disposable diapers create. We cloth diapered all three of our babies and never had a diaper rash, never, um, because cloth diapers don't do that. And there was one or two times where we were flying and we had to go to the airport and we couldn't bring the cloth diapers for whatever reason. So we ended up, we ended up using a disposable and he got a baby rash. He got a rash. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and blowouts, always yeah. blowouts. I hate sposies. Um, but I, I don't want to launch into a like natural living. Yes, I do actually <laughs> into a natural living diatribe. Yes. But I this segment do. brought to you by Goop. Right? Um, no, not Johnson not and Johnson. No, I know. I was just kidding. <laughs> what, what was? What's the uh, uh, the other girl? Um, Jessica. Uh, oh, honest. Alba. Honest company. Yeah. Yes. Honest. Right. Yeah. No, even their diapers have no. They make disposable diapers too. Um, it's only slightly less bad. Okay. Um, but, you know, Fred Le Frederick Lassort in the chat points out that, you know, these pharmaceutical companies don't just put this stuff on babies. Like there are poisons in all ages, <laughs> the things that they're, you know, all products, products for all ages is what I'm pointing out. And uh, I think that one, we should hold them accountable. This should not be OK. Two, I think you should look at everything in your house and say, what can I not buy here? What can I wean myself off of? Um, in fact, I loved, we watched that show alone where they like drop people in the wilderness and the one guy who won the first season, his big lesson was, we use too many cosmetic products. I can bathe here in the river and brush myself off with sand and then I'm all right. Yeah, you know? I interviewed the guy, the, the first the first season of the show alone on the History Channel, I interviewed the winner of that show and he was just like, you just realize, and he was from like North Carolina or South Carolina or Georgia or something. Um, maybe it was Georgia. And uh, did, did you guys ever watch the show Alone? It's so good. You ever watched that? It's such a good show. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it was the first season and he won. And he, you know, he, he won by a long shot too. Like, <laughs> like several days out in the, um, the Yukon. 
or yeah, something it was like in that. The, you know, Pacific Northwest. But anyway, but yeah, he was just like, wow, you realize like all of the garbage that we're using back home, like it's just ridiculous what you don't need to survive. And, you know, you can actually live a better, cleaner life when you get rid of yes. all of this stuff. So um, if you make these small choices about the products in your life, then these stories won't hurt you so much. Yeah, so so, so I just want to be clear. The name, of, so Johnson & Johnson, they had, they were facing 38,000 lawsuits and then they changed, they, they spun off a new company called LTL, whatever that is, right? Then they dumped all the asbestos related liabilities, including the avalanche of lawsuits into this new firm, LTL. And then they filed for bankruptcy in, in wow. North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> And now they say Johnson & Johnson doesn't have this liability anymore. They pushed it off into the company they created to file for bankruptcy. <laughs> Could you, you imagine go. if we did that? Oh, my God. No. It's like desperately seeking Susan. What's that? Like the movie? The Madonna movie. <laughs> what is that? Where it's like she uses the doppelganger, like, go after her. You, yeah, you're, after, you're not after me. You're after her. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I think everybody should do what I do. I just, I just train my kids to go out in the yard. <laughs> right. To go to potty train? Well, you ever see that yeah. movie Babies? Like babies, it just shows like all of these different babies like being raised like San Francisco, you know, and in, in, in like in, in Africa. And they just show the kids as like going out in the sand and going in the potty, you know, yeah. and it's like you realize, wow, all no the stuff needed. that we have in San Francisco, they have in San Francisco. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, so that's the uh, Johnson and Johnson story. So there you go. <laughs> And while they're busy making money hand over fist from their vaccines and everything else, now they can just set this stuff up. And I'm sure Wall Street's happy about it. They're like, oh, phew. Okay, they spun this off into another another company. No problem. Nothing to see here. Nothing to worry their about. Their profits can continue to be high. We can continue yeah. to have confidence that they're solving the pandemic. Yeah. It's all good. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.